So, I'm back again. Today we're going over another book by Sudhamurti which is called Something Happened on the Way to Heaven. Now, I remembered while watching some of my old videos that I used to do all of them over the top of my head. Just right off the top of my head, just say whatever I want and most of them were extempo. None of them were scripted. None of them were scripted. I remember that none of my old videos had any points that I used to note down. I just used to talk about whatever I knew about the book and try and explain it in the best way I could without having to write like spend like one hour writing down a script, which I do now. So I decided maybe this video, I'll change it up and I'll try to do everything off the top of my head. I'll talk about this book and I want to see how much I've changed, how much, how fluidly I can speak and let's hope we enjoy. So jumping into the video. So the first book I read by Sudha Murthy, understandably, was The Magic of the Lost Temple, which I have also reviewed on my channel. And it was, I think, two years ago. And I'd actually read it when I was 12 years old. So yeah, it was an amazing book. It was fun. It was interesting back when I was 12 years old. And as I grew up, I decided that I was going to jump into some of Sudha Murthy's more, uh, you know, books for young adults and books for children. And then I read How I Taught My Grandmother to Read, which was another book for children. And then I came across this one, Something Happened on the Way to Heaven. And this is one of the books that stood out the most, not necessarily because of the stories. The first thing that stood out to me was that this is not written by Sudhamurti. It's been edited by Sudhamurti. I'll get to that in a minute and explain why this phenomenon took place. But this is a collection of, quote, 20 inspiring real life stories. And she's edited them, she's chosen them, she's selected them and she's compiled them into this book and it's 20 of those stories which have been edited by Sudhamurti, not written. So the reason it stood out the most first of all was because of the change in writing style because you do know each author has their own writing style and Sudhamurti's writing style was not there in this book since she hasn't written it. So this is a heart touching book with every single page you flip it invokes a thought, some kind of motivation or inspiration in you and it makes you think that Maybe, just maybe, the world is still an amazing place and a beautiful place to live in. Because all we hear about are the bad things, the cruel things, the horrible things, the annoying, the irritating things that people do. We never hear about the good things. We never have, we never do, and we probably never will. But there is that small little kindness and joy in everyday life that makes you want to appreciate the world that we're living in. These simple acts leave a profound impact in some of the lives of the characters in these books. And the best part about it is that it is real. Nothing is fake, at least I hope not. I'm banking on the fact that these stories have to be real and if they are, they're extremely inspiring and fun to read. Because such instances happening with people in their lives, you really think that maybe the world is a good enough place to live in. Because the very core concept of this book is reminding us that we still have humanity, a little bit of humanity in every single one. Not everyone is selfish, not everyone is thinking to fulfill their own needs, not everyone wants to take advantage of others. If we just look behind this this veil of human errors and problems and cruelty, there is still that humanity behind it and it's a beautiful place to live in. We tend to ignore it so much. Something Happened on the Way to Heaven is a collection of 20 stories which was in a contest run by Penguin Books which is also the publisher for this book and they were, they've been read and selected by Sudha Murthy and compiled into this book. They capture the love, kindness that we feel through our daily lives when we're going through our daily grind, going through our entire day which is really tough and that joy, kindness, happiness that we feel, it captures that perfectly. Now while researching for this video I went over the feedback and reviews from other people and I have to say it is 50-50. Half of the people don't care whether it's been written or edited by Sudha Murthy, they're just saying that the book in itself is wonderful, which I agree with. You have to judge the book and not the fact that it's not written by Sudha Murthy, but unfortunately the other half has this problem. They're saying that since it's not written by Sudhamurti, since it's edited by Sudhamurti, it's not up to the mark and not up to par. Why? Because this book is actually really interesting and Sudhamurti has chosen all these stories herself. She's decided which stories she wants to put in this. She's decided how to edit them. So you have to give that a little bit of respect and respect the authors who've written the 20 stories written in this book. So in my opinion, it's okay for the book to be edited by her, so let's tone down the hate on that aspect. She judged the competition, so she got to pick the top 20 winners who were going to make it into this book. So that's something. So now, out of these 20 stories, I would like to share three which I found my favorite and hopefully just listen to them and get a simple gist of how the stories are in this book. The first one is the mysterious couple. Now, okay, 
okay i know what you might think it's some sort of weird thriller or some horrifying thing it's not as i said it's real life and yes real life can be horrifying and thrilling but in this case it most certainly is not this is a story told from the author's point of view it talks about an elderly couple in their 60s who are always smiling always happy they like to talk to people but they always avoid questions about themselves and they never talk about who they are where they came from they just want to make friends and they're always jolly and happy but every person in that neighborhood starts to judge them. No one talks to them. They find them creepy and kind of suspicious. No one talks to them and they just like, you know, passing by. They talk to a couple of people and that's it. So the author gets intrigued. The author finds this interest, interesting and the author's curiosity is piqued. But one day the author's three-year-old daughter randomly walked up to this old couple and started having a conversation with them. Now the author has said usually they let... Uh, their daughter uh, decide who she wants to talk to and she was actually having a lengthy conversation with the old man and they were actually having fun the author saw that the three-year-old girl was actually having fun and putting up a lengthy conversation with the old man so the author went in and sat down for an hour to chat with the old man over there the author came to know that the old man's children had died in an accident a few years back and they were just on their way to becoming successful, doing something interesting, and they died. So the couple was trying to get away from the sympathy. They did, they did not want the sympathy of everyone else. And when the author went home, uh, the author hugged the young three-year-old girl and remembered to cherish the people that we have. The couple, they did not want to talk about the tragedy. Do you understand? They wanted to leave it behind. They do not want other people's sympathy and other people taking pity on them, other people feeling sorry for them. No, they just wanted to make friends, they just wanted to live a happy life and go past that tragedy. And that one chance the author took to talk to them made all the difference in the author's life. The second story is Acid. My first point about this story is unfortunately it is only for 15 and above. There are only like a couple of stories in this book which cannot be read by children but I'd place this at 15 years and above. It's about meeting people online people do it people do it it's a very common occurrence today and it's fine up to a certain extent where it actually gets shady is when you start meeting those people in real life don't get me wrong they could be the best people if you spend enough time with them if you've understood them properly then they could be the best people they could turn out to be a lifelong friend but they could also be a horrible problem and you don't know who they are where they live what they do you don't have any clarification for any of those things even they might tell you online but is do you have to believe it they could say anything and you don't know maybe they're lying maybe they're not so i'm saying it can go either way you can either find a really good friend or it can be a really big problem and unfortunately the latter happened in this story i won't go over the specifics because uh, first of all i want to save a little bit of the, this story in particular for all of you or anyone who buys the book but i will tell you the end a little bit so you understand how interesting the story actually is and which point which problem which issue it highlights it ends with the author being doused with acid which unfortunately is not an uncommon occurrence nowadays then the story further shows that how society makes it out to be the girl's fault for meeting the wrong person online they turn it into the girl's fault and say that it was all her decision there's nothing they can do about it the perpetrator also gets away because he is rich and he has money so he gets away and he escapes that he escapes imprisonment and moreover the perpetrator's father condones what his son had done and the author was wondering how can that boy's father as a human being condone what his son has done and then to top it off the court and everyone else around the girl passed a judgment that she should marry the boy she refused she said that why should i do that he ruined my life and she keeps that positive outlook on life that everything will be fine and the story ends with the line an acid attack cannot define me. And just sit down and think about this for two minutes. All the problems in your life, everything you're going through, is it as bad as being doused by acid and becoming blind in one eye? Imagine keeping a positive outlook through that period. 
She managed to do it and that powerful line at the end that an acid attack cannot define me clearly shows that all your problems, all your struggles, everything you go through are not something that define you. Your success, your winnings, those are the things that define you. The people around you define you, your friends, your family, people who love you, they define you. And the last story was Savita's story. It talks about a maid who comes to the author's house to work. I'll shorten this down because it's, well, main concept of the story is just a little bit towards the end but the maid had a daughter who was the top of the class and the maid's name was Savita and Savita said that her daughter was going to be really really successful since she was the top of her class she was doing very good in life her daughter died and Savita was just a hollow shell she lost all feelings and after a few weeks she actually came back to work in the author's house because she couldn't afford not to you know to miss a long period of time because she needs to earn money she didn't even have time to grieve and then the author says that they barely heard her talk they used to keep um, she used to come she used to do her work there was no um, you know drop in the quality of her work she kept up the same quality of the work but she used to talk way less she used to speak way less she used to interact way less and she just became a hollow shell an empty person after her daughter died and finally I like to end the story by telling you that the author's mother sees Savita sometime later in a second-hand bookstore and when she asked what Savita is doing there Savita says happily cheerfully that her um, neighbor's son is a really really smart kid and he's really really doing good and he's he wants to become something great and she's buying books to him books to him no 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 uh, she's buying books for him and she wants to support him the best she can because she wasn't able to support her daughter she wants to fuel someone else's dream and finally the author says that uh, the author could almost see Savita's daughter smiling from the heavens above on that cheerful note thank you so much for watching this video if you like to buy the book or buy the kindle version i'll leave a link to both in the description down below hopefully you'll enjoy it very very much as i did while i was reading this book i deviated a little bit from sudhamurti's children aspect and how she writes her other books but i found it super refreshing to read the style of stories that are not exactly hers but it's at the same time they're really inspiring and after all real life Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like to show your support and I am gonna see you guys next time. Later. I'm still waiting for something extremely fun to happen to me so I can put it in a book. It hasn't happened yet. I mean I'm waiting. I hope something happens. But every pe well, but every person in that this book has 224 pages. I forgot to mention that earlier. <laughs> Sorry about that.